Praise God. But we're not here claiming religion, amen. We, we want to take it back to what the Bible says, amen. That's why the Bible says, forget not the old landmark, amen. Praise God. So we, we want to go back to the old time way, amen. Not the stuff that they cropped up within the past few hundred years, amen. We're talking about something that was established, amen, 2,000 years ago in Israel in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. Amen. And so we thank God, amen, for the gospel. And then, like we say, Jesus was resurrected from the dead. Amen. He was resurrected by the Spirit of God. So his very own Holy Ghost Spirit, amen, he raised his own body up from the dead. Amen. That's why he said, no man can take my life. I lay it down on myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. Amen. And when he did raise his body up, that's why he said, amen, all power, both in heaven and in earth, is given unto me. Right. Amen. If he wasn't God, he had no business making that kind of statement. Amen. Because if he was not God, that means God is sitting up in heaven with no power. Because Jesus claimed to have it all. He said all power, both. He said all power. Not some, not three quarts of it or one third. He said all power, both in heaven and in earth, is given unto me. Amen. Praise God. So that made Jesus Christ the all-powerful. Amen. In other words, the almighty. Amen. Because might and power means it means the same thing. Amen. So if Jesus is the almighty, that means God, if he's not God, that means God is in heaven with no own power. And the so-called Holy Spirit is sitting up there with no power. Amen. So we thank God, amen, that we know who Jesus is, that Jesus Christ is God almighty. Amen. So he rose himself from the dead, and he likewise, amen, we have to be risen from the dead as well, amen, through receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And that's something that, praise God, that Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost himself, has to, amen, give a person. It's a gift. Yeah. The Holy Ghost is a gift. Amen. And even in the book of Luke, he said, amen, if ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, Amen. How much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? Him? Amen. It's a gift, but praise God, we do have to ask for. Oh yeah. Amen. And that's something that God wants everyone to have. Amen. But the thing about the Holy Ghost is, it's only given to them that obey Him. Amen. So we have to be obedient. Amen. In Jesus' name, and and we can pray and Amen. Plead to God to give us more of a mind to be obedient. Yes. Amen. To get us to where we need to be. Amen. Because God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Yes. Amen. False prophet will tell you, well, you just do the best you can and don't wallow. Mm -hmm. Amen. You can still <laughs> sin, just don't wallow. Okay. Amen. Nowhere in the Bible, you know, and so you got people doing that. Amen. Because they, they, they have a love for their dark lifestyles. They, mm -hmm. Amen. But praise God, we have to, amen, denounce the hidden things of this honesty. Amen. Praise God. And not walking in craftiness, amen, but walking, amen, in the light, amen, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. That's why he said that he is the light of the world. He said, he that abideth in me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Amen. In him is light, amen, and no darkness at all. Amen. In Jesus' name. So, praise God. And so, you know, praise the Lord. We have to, amen, some of us have to Amen. Give up our so-called friends. Amen. Especially they trying to drag us into hell. Mm -hmm. Amen. I had many so-called friends, but once I started coming to God, amen, the right way, amen, taking off the sin of this world, amen, my lifestyle, amen, them friends had to go. Yeah. I found out they wasn't so friendly after all. Mm -hmm. Amen. Say, oh, well, you, you don't want to go to the club? No. Oh, well, we, we'll see you later. Amen. Once, they, once that part of you is dead, Amen. Praise God. You ain't drinking no more. Ain't smoking no more. Ain't nothing no more. They, they not gonna want to have nothing to do with you. Amen. Praise God. In Jesus' name. But that that's all right because Amen. Hallelujah. We're just pilgrims and strangers passing by. We're not trying to make this place our home. It's just a matter of time before we leave this world. Amen. But we want to leave this world ready. Amen. We've seen people we knew. Amen. Family members. They left this world. Amen. And they wasn't ready to die. Amen. They was in sin. They died in sin. Amen. Praise God. And it wasn't God's fault. It was their choice. Yeah. Amen. They made a choice that they, they didn't want to have nothing to do with God. 
you know, and they, they may want some religion, because many of them had religion. They was in the Baptist church or, or had they Protestant religion, you know. But it's a difference between religion and holiness, amen. Religion ain't going to save a person, amen. Only righteousness and true holiness will, amen. And so that's why we believe and know that Acts 2.38 is the only plan of salvation, amen. Because that's what the name of the Father is. The name of the Father is Jesus. Amen. John 5, 43. We know the name of the Son is Jesus. Amen. Matthew 1, 21. The name of the Holy Ghost is Jesus. John 14, 26. So a person claiming that they've been baptized and they were never baptized in that name, then, amen, that was just a waste of time, a waste of water, and a waste of getting wet. Amen. Praise God. You have to be baptized in Amen. In Jesus' name. But first, amen, that baptism of repentance has to take place. That's right. Amen. Like the apostle of John the Baptist, you know, they say he was preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. So, you know, before Jesus Christ came, amen, John was the forerunner, amen, announcing to the world that Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, amen, he's come to take away the sins of the world. So not just for the Jews only, but also for us Gentiles. Amen. He died for all men. Praise God. So God is not prejudiced. Amen. He's no respect of person. Praise God. And we shouldn't be prejudiced either. Amen. Because ain't no prejudiced person going to heaven. I tell you that right now. Amen. They can claim what they want to claim. But amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We have to keep ourselves pure. Amen. There's bad types of people in all races. Amen. Praise God. Especially the black race. Amen. Not, not saying that we all bad, but, you know, wow. it's bad people in all races. Yes, Amen. Man. Praise God. So we have to look beyond that and see what's really motivating the person's actions. And that's that devil. Yeah. Amen. The, the God of this world, the, the spirit, <laughs> lowercase spirit, that's working in the children of disobedience. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why we have to be born again of the water and of the spirit. Give you a new mindset, a new life. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Love for God. Amen. And the hatred for evil. Amen. And we thank God, amen, for his grace and his mercy. Amen. In Jesus' name, we thank God for, amen, what he has done. Amen. And what he's doing. Praise God. Hallelujah. Just a matter of time, brother. Amen. Hallelujah. God's going to take a hold of you and you ain't going to be able to do nothing about it. Amen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is coming. Amen. It's just a matter of time. Yes, Lord. And so, uh, well, we're not going to be up here long, uh, if the Lord will. We just want to touch over a few uh, scriptures here. And so let's see uh, what text we're going to get into. Okay, let's uh, start off at uh, 1 Timothy chapter, chapter 5. That's in the New Testament, uh, first epistle of Paul the Apostle to Timothy chapter 5. So the main title or topic of today is keeping yourself pure. Or purifying yourself. Mm -hmm. Amen. So either in the process of purifying or becoming pure or remaining pure. But once a person is, you know, purified by the Lord Jesus Christ and the anointing of his Holy Ghost, have to stay, amen, pure. Amen. In Jesus' name. So that's when, you know, amen, seeking the Lord and staying in his word and praying and staying prayerful and even sometimes fasting, amen, comes into place to keep yourself pure. First Timothy chapter five. Chapter five. Okay. And we will, of course, on your own time, you can read this entire chapter, but uh, for the sake of the uh, topic we want to bring out. <coughs>
I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that thou observe these things without preferring one before another, doing nothing by partiality. So Paul was telling Timothy not to show favoritism um. among people. That's why he said you observe these things without preferring one before another, you know, over someone else. So, so the Bible, it, it teaches a, you know, very apparent against favoritism, or partiality, you know, you favor one person above another, you know, amen, we're supposed to love everybody the same. That's right. Amen. And I, I understand some people we may uh, can get along with better than others, but yeah. we shouldn't, you know, love them any less. <coughs> oh, amen. No. And it goes on to say, verse 22, lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partaker of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure. Amen. So we're not supposed to be partaking in no one's mess. When we know that they in sin and they're trying to get us to participate in it or, you know, play a role in it, amen, praise God. It don't matter how upset they get, Amen. That, that that's that's supposed to be the amen the, the, the stop point right there. Oh no, mm -hmm. well, I, I'm I'm not doing that. That's right. Amen. Amen. In Jesus name. Even if they call themselves trying to tell you it's for a different it's for something else. Amen. Praise God. And you know they ain't living right, and you know they doing the wrong thing, and what the wrong crowd. Amen. They try to you know get you to amen do a favor for them or something like that. Amen. You're supposed to refuse that. Praise God. Because you're not supposed to be partaking in other men's sins. That's why, I, you know, I, I try my best by God's grace to be led of God when it comes to dealing with panhandlers. But yeah. we don't beat on drugs. Well, I don't mind feeding them. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. I ain't, talking about, my money. I ain't talking about feeding them. I don't feed have no problem. Them. No, I'm not, I'm not saying don't feed them. I'm talking about when it comes to the money. Oh, no. They don't be asking for food. They be asking for they money, even though they have a sign saying, I want some food. Yeah. And, and I said, okay, I'm, I'm the best. I said, yeah, you want some food? I'll go buy you something to eat. No, 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 I, I, I'm all right. I, I just want the money. No, no but no, you, you, you don't want nothing to eat. You, you want some money so you can go get high. Amen. So you can go get your next fix. Amen. So praise God. So, so now we're not supposed to be partaking in other men's sins. Amen. They they want to get you know praise God. They want to do the wrong yeah. thing. Let them you know Little get a job and support their own habit. Not that I'm encouraging it, but you know that's what some drug heads do. They work. That's right. You know, but you know, but praise God. So that that goes with anything. It can be our relatives, whoever. Mm -hmm. Amen. They trying to get us to partake in their sins. Amen. Praise God. We ain't supposed to be a partake in their sins because it's like you know. I suppose like the criminal system uh, refers to it as an accessory to a crime. Yeah. You didn't quite commit the crime, but you you an accessory because you helped that, you know, person out. You helped them to commit that crime. So so God looks at it the same way. Well, you didn't quite commit the sin, but you was a partake in it. Amen. You were an accessory. You helped them, amen, to get they fixed. Amen. So it makes us just as guilty. That's why he said keep yourself pure. Amen. So, so what? They get upset at you and, you know, decide not to speak to you no more. Oh, well. You know, I'd rather keep myself pure before God than to make you happy and my soul be in danger of hell fire. Amen. So, praise God. We're going to go into another scripture here. The Lord bless. Uh, let's see. Romans chapter 6. So that's that's also the New Testament right after Acts. So Romans chapter 6.
begin in verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Amen. That's the answer to that question. No. Amen. A person cannot continue in sin and thinking that grace is going to abound. Amen. Sin has to be, amen, put to a stop. Amen. So in other words, amen, contrary to what the false prophet, amen, and other liars say, amen, a person can't live any old kind of devilish way, amen, and die in that devilish way and think that they're going to heaven. Amen. Because the grace of God is, you know, if they ever were saved, amen, they certainly went back and they died in sin. Yeah. So they're no longer under the grace of God. Amen. So he say, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin, now that's the difference, not dead in sin, dead to sin. Amen. That's what repentance is about, being dead to sin. Amen. Say, I, I don't do this no more. Amen. Been delivered. Amen. Being dead to sin. So, amen. Not dead in sin. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein. So in other words, it doesn't make sense if a person is dead to sin, but yet they somehow living in sin. You can't live in sin and be dead to sin at the same time. That's just like, you know, the false uh, notion of trying to straddle the fence. There is no straddling the fence when it comes to God. You either on the right side of the fence or you on the wrong side. Amen. No in between. No deal. And praise God. And so that's what Paul is, amen, explaining in so many words. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized unto his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That's why we say baptism. In Jesus' name is a type of burial. Right. Amen. Repentance is a type of death. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's why he said, verse 2, dead to sin. That's what repentance means. That's another definition of repentance. If you want to think about it like that, I'll be dead to sin. Mm -hmm. In other words, no longer participating or practicing these sinful habits. Amen. Know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him. Amen. Just as Jesus Christ was buried on, amen, in that tomb, amen, after he died on the cross, amen, we're likewise buried with Jesus Christ, amen, by baptism, by water baptism in Jesus' name. Into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in newness of life. And that's the Holy Ghost, amen. You receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, that's giving you the power to walk in that newness of life. Mm -hmm. Amen. The same spirit that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead is the same spirit that will fall on the inside of your soul. Amen. When you're ready to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost and you yes. speak with other tongues as this spirit gives the other. The very same spirit, not a different one, but that very same, amen, powerful anointing. Amen. For we have been planted together in the likeness of his death. So for, if, so, so for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. <coughs> Amen. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. Amen. So the old man, the old, amen, sinful man is crucified. Amen. It was supposed to be. Amen. Verse 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, <clears throat> crucified with Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what repentance is. Jesus counts that as our crucifixion when we turn from sin. Right. Amen. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. Mm -hmm. Amen. So the body of the works, amen, of the practices in one's life of sin, might be destroyed, amen. Totally destroyed, amen, by the anointing. That henceforth we should not serve sin. Amen. That's why Jesus said that he that 
amen, committive, which means continually go on. Mm -hmm. He that committeth sin is the servant of sin. So God doesn't want us to be servants of sin. He wants us to serve him, amen, in righteousness and true holiness, amen. And then it says, verse 7, for he that is dead is freed from sin. That's why we spoke earlier, amen. Once a person died, whatever they was into, they ain't into it no more. That's right. Amen. Praise God. We don't want to wait till death catch us, amen, to give up something. Praise God. If you want to give it up, amen, when you willingly have the chance, amen, when you have breath, amen, in your nostrils, amen, when you can make that voluntary choice to say, you know what, I want to serve the Lord. Amen. I want abundant life. Amen. I want God to be happy with me. Amen. Not angry with me, but happy with me. Amen. Because the, the Holy Scriptures say God is angry with the wicked every day. Even though he loves, amen, the souls of the wicked, but he's angry with them because of the, the amen, the lifestyle that they're living. Amen, because they're serving the devil. Mm -hmm. Amen, they're children of the devil. Yep. Amen, praise God. But hallelujah, one can be transformed from being a child of the devil, amen, to being a child of God. Amen, but it all starts with repentance. Amen, in Jesus' name. A person believing in the gospel of Jesus Christ, the death, the burial, the resurrection, amen, and they want to be saved, they have to repent, amen. That body of sin must be destroyed, amen, in their life. And henceforth, we should not serve sin. So a person can't serve sin and be saved. For he that is dead is free from sin. So, amen. Whether they died holy or they died unholy, amen, they free from that sin, amen. Praise God. If they were a murderer, amen, they died and they sinned, amen, they ain't killing nobody no more. Amen, they ain't stealing from no one no more. Amen, they free from that habit, amen. Even if their soul is lost because they didn't, amen, never born again on the water of the spirit, but they're free from that sinful habit, amen, because you don't see dead men walking. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we, shall also live with him. <coughs> amen. So we be dead with Christ, amen, praise God. We believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Amen. So, so Jesus Christ ain't dying no more. He, he ain't going to be crucified again. Amen. He, he did that once. That's right. Amen. Un un unlike what the Catholics teach, you know, Roman Catholicism, they, they, they doctrine is like Jesus is always being crucified. Oh. He's just an ever-dying Savior. Mm. Amen. That's, that's what the Eucharist is about. Amen. The, the wafer supposedly being transformed into the body of Christ and the wine is being, amen, actually transformed into the blood of Christ. And that's why you, you see the pictures and things like that. And they churches, they, they have a, uh, amen, a statue of a you know, some European-looking guy with long hair, like he just always dying. Amen. Like he never rose himself from the dead. Amen. But but Roman Catholicism is, you know, one of the most corrupt religions on the face of the earth. Amen. It, it is not Christian at all. Amen. With paganism, amen, idol worship, amen, praying to statues, that's idolatry. The Bible classifies that as idolatry. Amen. Make any graven images, amen, whether it's a stone or wood or hay or whatever, amen, and you burn down and worship in that, amen, that is idolatry. Amen. No idolater have any inheritance in the kingdom of God. Amen. So anyone watching from the live stream, you a Catholic, amen, you need to come out of that false Catholic religion, amen, and come to the true religion and be saved. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. We say it in love. Amen. We, we, we don't hate Catholics. Amen. We just hate that dead religion. Amen. Because we know it's of the devil. It's not of God. <clears throat> Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death have no more dominion over him. So Jesus ain't dying no more. When he come back again, he, he's not going to come back to be crucified and spit upon. Amen. For people to, to pull hairs from his beard again. Amen. Praise God. He ain't taking no more of that. Amen. When he come back, amen, he's going to rule the nation with a rod and iron. Amen. It's, it's going to be no more Democrats and Republicans. Mm. Amen. Corrupt. Amen. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. 
running things, amen, as it is right now. Amen. Jesus Christ is going to be the ruler. Amen. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Praise God. So it, it best it just be best pays to just be on the Lord's side. Amen. Get on this side before that happens. Praise God. So when, hallelujah, his second coming do come, amen, praise God, you be in that number. Amen. That's the song saying when the saints go marching in, Lord, I want to be in the number. Amen. For in that he died, verse 10, he died unto sin once. The only one time that he died, amen, for the sins of the world. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Verse 11. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. Amen. We shall have to be dead to sin. <clears throat> Excuse me. Not dead in sin, but dead unto sin. Dead to sin. He said, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed. And the word indeed means truly. Indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Be alive unto God through Jesus Christ. Amen. Living a holy life. Amen. But be dead unto sin. And then in verse 12, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Amen. We have to resist the devil. Amen. That's when you, you got to start putting up a fight. Amen. Because the devil is fighting you. Yeah. Amen. He wants you to go to hell. Praise God. You have to fight on that. That's why the Bible says you resist the devil. He will flee from you. Amen. In Jesus' name, you have to resist that devil. Amen. Praise God. He said, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. That ye should obey it in the lust thereof. And here we go, verse 13. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. Amen. So we shouldn't be using our bodies to do the wrong things. Amen. Praise God. It's time to let God use us. Amen. Praise God. Stop letting the devil use you. Amen. Let God use you. Amen. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. But give yourselves unto God, amen, unto the Holy Ghost, amen, the good spirit, as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Now, doesn't that make sense, amen, with uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5, say, amen, don't be partaking in other man's sin. And now Paul's saying again, don't yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness yes. unto sin, but yield them to God. Amen. For verse 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you. Amen. Shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. In other words, no. Amen. That's the whole point he's making. Amen. A person can't go out sinning because they think that they, amen, have the grace of God and thinking that grace is going to abound. Amen. God is a merciful God. Amen. He'll give a person space to repent if they fall into sin. He's going to usually give them a little time, amen, to, according to his will. He'll give them a little time to repent of their sin, amen, and come back to God if they backslid. Amen. And, of course, you know, he, he gives, amen, people that never come to him a long time, amen. Praise God. And we thank God, as they say, better late than never. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. As long as you get in. Amen. Praise God. Just like that song said, just before heaven doors close. Amen. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, you don't want to wait till heaven doors close to try to say, well, you know, I think it's now. It's too late then. Amen. And praise God. So we say, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves service to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey. Whether of sin unto death, mm -hmm. I mean, because that's what sin is going to lead to. A yeah. person never stop. It's going to lead to, amen, death. Amen. That, that yeah. second death. Yes. Amen. That first death we're not going to yes. avoid. But that second death you can avoid. Yes. Amen. Or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that he was the servants of sin. Amen. He's speaking to the saints now. But ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. 
being then made free from sin, he became the servant of righteousness. I speak after the man of men because of the affirmity of your flesh, for as ye have given your members servants to uncleanness mm -hmm. and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now ye are your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. Mm -hmm. For when ye were the servants of sin, mm -hmm. ye were free from righteousness. Amen. So a person was walking in darkness, okay, they were free from living right. Mm -hmm. Amen. But now a person living right, they should be, amen, free from sin. What fruit, verse 21, what fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. In other words, seeing God's Jesus Christ face in peace. For the wages of sin is death. Amen. So that's the payday of sin. Amen. Wages meaning pay. Amen. Something that you earn. Amen. Praise God. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So salvation is free. Yes, Amen. Is. So we thank the Lord out of Romans chapter 6 and then we start off uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5. Amen. And praise God, we're going to get ready to close. Amen. <laughs> Amen. In Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Amen. Praise God. And of course, you know, you can read that whole entire chapter. Amen. So this is what we believe. Amen. For those who are tuning in to the live stream in terms of what a man or a woman must do in order to be saved. Amen. It does not consist of uh, bowing your head and repeating some sinner's prayer and accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior, amen, because there's no way in this Bible, amen, that, that false salvation doctrine, amen, that came about uh, within the past, what, 50 or 60 years ago, amen, with false prophet Graham and all them, amen, leading the way to that lie, amen, praise God, we believe in what the Bible says concerning salvation, amen, that one, Amen. According to Acts chapter 2, verse 38, this is, amen, the key into the kingdom of God. Amen. Peter, amen, was full of the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. He had just received the Holy Ghost. Amen. You read early on in that chapter. Amen. Amen. Verses 1 through 4. Amen. Acts chapter 2. And now he was preaching to the Jews, proselytes, priests, and Arabians. Amen. Jews and Gentiles. Amen. That were gathered on the day of Pentecost in Jerusalem. Amen. And after he told them, amen, and preached the word and let them know that, amen, Jesus Christ, amen, is the Messiah, amen, that you have crucified and slain, amen, God had made them both Lord and Christ, amen, verse 37. Now, when they heard this, they were preaching their heart, mm -hmm. amen, after they heard Peter preaching full of the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost, amen, that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven that he heals, amen. The Son of God, according to the flesh, amen. Say, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Now they asked him, what shall we do? Amen. Because they want to be saved. So they asked him for instructions on what must they do to be saved. Amen. In Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Peter, the apostle, gives those instructions to them. Then Peter said unto them, repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So one must first repent, which means turn away from the practice of their sin, or be dead to sin, amen, not dead in sin, but turn away, amen, from the practice of your sinful habits, amen. And praise God, you can ask God for some godly sorrow to work that repentance, Amen. And you also have to, amen, do your part of resisting the devil. Amen. You may have to, amen, fast and pray, amen, on some things until the yoke is broken. Amen. And then once a person repent of their sins, then they ought to be baptized in water by a true man of God in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins. Because Jesus is the name. Amen. The power is in the name. Amen. Father itself is not a name. Son itself is not a name. Holy Ghost 
is not a name. Mm -hmm. Those are only titles. Amen. Mm -hmm. So you were baptized by someone that recited those titles of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. That was the Roman baptism. Amen. Your baptism didn't mean nothing to God. Nothing. Amen. In Jesus' name. So once one repent, then you have to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And then he said he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So in other words, you shall receive the promise of the Father. You shall speak with other tongues as his spirit in the utterance. Amen. Praise God. But repentance must take place first. Amen. Now you can receive the Holy Ghost before you baptize in Jesus' name. Amen. Like, like what happened in Cornelius' household in Acts chapter 10. But you have to repent first. Those people repented first. Amen. Before God fell on them. Amen. So, and then, of course, Peter commanded that they were baptized in Jesus' name afterwards. Amen. But hallelujah, it doesn't go around repentance. Repentance has to come first. So that's what we believe. Amen. And he said on in verse 39, For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Amen, in Jesus' name. So we thank the Lord, amen, for, amen, this day. <clears throat> Pardon me, I guess I, guess we all kind of fight a little bit of allergies oh, yeah. and this and that, but God is still good. Oh, yes. Amen, we believe him to bring us through it, amen, bring us over it, amen, <clears throat> as he has done before. Amen, in Jesus' name. So uh, once again, this is the Apostolic Holiness Church of Jesus Christ, located at 4204 Highway 6 North. Houston, Texas, 77084. Amen. Our current uh, schedule is Sundays at 10 a.m. Uh, mm -hmm. Central Standard Time. Our number is 832-360-5812. And the website is ahcjc.com. That's ahcjc.com uh, after the initials of the church. Mm -hmm.